This is Wednesday, November 4th, meeting of the Economic Development Committee is a preliminary matter. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some meet attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. This is Peter Hoffman, Chair of the EDC. For maybe to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me prior to me calling the meeting to order. Members, when I call you, your name, please respond in the affirmative. Paul Anderson. Here. Jason Rowell. Here. Jeff Green. Here. And I'm Peter Hoffman. For the quorum of the committee at present, present, I call this meeting to order at 6.06 on Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. <clears throat> this open meeting of the EDC is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. Specific information and in the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties of, with a right and or requirements to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Berlin website at www.tannaberlin.com. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely provided Reasonable of public access is afforded so that the public can fo follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. While no in-person attendance of the members of the public is permitted, every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by a technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so despite the best efforts, we will post on the town's website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless subject, such public participation is required by law. The standard public comment portion of this meeting will accommodate limited public comment. For this meeting, the EDC is convening using the Zoom platform as posted on the agenda identifying how the public may join. Public is encouraged to follow along during this meeting during, using the posted agenda, unless I note otherwise. Supplying, su excuse me, supporting materials that are available this evening to members of the EDC can be made available to the public by request. We're now turning the first agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I'll introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. I'll invite each board member by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. A uh, specific comment here I don't think will be that formal. Committee members and speakers on the agenda, please remember to mute your phone or microphone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in conversations with each other, please do so through me, taking care to identify yourself. We're almost done. To the extent that our technical ability capability, excuse me, technical capability allows, public comment will be permitted during the public comment portion of this meeting as follows. Attendees, phones, and other devices will be muted unless and until they raise their hand, electronically speaking, and are recognized by me to speak, I ask each member of the public who wishes to speak to identify their name. I'll afford each speaker time to ask a question or make a brief comment. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. First item on the agenda is our guests. Um, let me invite Chris Tomei from Fit Factory to speak first because I believe he's got the least amount of time. Chris, does that work for you? Uh, yes, good evening, Peter. Thank you. 
So Chris, the floor is yours. We'd love to hear about how Fit Factory is opened, opening, going, how we can help, anything at all. And in spite of what I just read, um, a free for all is really quite fine. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Well, uh, first of all, like, thank you for including me in the meeting. Um, and also, as well as the uh, reception for Fit Factory opening in, in Berlin. Um, we did our grand opening on October 5th uh, to a you know, overwhelmingly positive response, uh, not only from our members who currently had joined the facility prior, uh, but also you know, as a whole. Um, it's uh, it's taken a while to get to the this point, And obviously, it's um, you know, with my years of experience in the fitness industry, I had never dreamed of opening a fit, fit facility amidst a global pandemic. So this is really more or less like a first for a lot of us. Um, over, overall, I think, yeah, member response is incredibly positive. Um, we continue to grow, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis and, um, we couldn't be more thankful to the, uh, the Highland Commons Plaza, uh, management group for you know, allowing us the space and, and which to do that. So, um, you know, in, in regards to like the overall club, um, you know, we're continually to track, you know, really good performance um, and are, you know, now sort of like branching out and looking at the you know, opportunities for getting more engaged with the community. So uh, now that we've been established for a greater part of a month, we're gonna be seeing some of those efforts going forward. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? My background in the fitness industry, uh, more or less, um, started roughly around 2003. Um, I had just uh, uh, finished a stint in the United States Marine Corps and just wanted to, you know, branch out myself into helping others lead more healthy and, and fit lifestyles. So I, I originally got started as in the industry as a personal trainer, and gradually kind of worked into growing more interested in how like a fitness business runs. I've largely been doing um, all sorts of management and operations and sales coaching in the fitness industry since then. Um, I've worked everywhere from uh, small chains all the way up to, um, you know, large, you know, corporate entities uh, to even, you know, dabbling a little bit and working with a uh, global franchise brand as, as well as like also with a fitness industry software vendor, like amongst that time. Um, Fit Factory more or less kind of brought me a little bit closer to home. So it was an opportunity to, to be local within Massachusetts and support the community. Um, and also not to, um, you know, to kind of like have a, a better, you know, um, flexible schedule for me and my family versus traveling every other week. Where, where's home? Oh, I live in Westford, Massachusetts. Um, not far. And not that far away. And you grew up around this area, so it's and it's an excellent opportunity, you know, to kind of still be connected with it. Um, like in regards to the Fit Factory, you know, this is our fifth location in Massachusetts, and and um, you know we're continuing to grow. Have you met your goals um, to date? Uh, for the month of October, uh, yes, we have, as well as also for pre-sale, uh, we blew by our original projections in terms of our overall growth. Uh, well, thank you for chatting with us. Thank you, Peter. Um, everyone else, uh, anyone have any comments or questions? Including Matt. So Matt is uh, the one of the principals of Riverbridge. Have you heard of Riverbridge? No, I, I have not, sir. So Matt can fill you in on Riverbridge, but sort of kind of down the street. And it's another concern that's a meaningful part of our community. Matt, would you mind just filling in, Chris, briefly about Riverbridge, and then we'll come back to you a little bit later, sure. so Chris has a clue what's what you're about. Uh, absolutely, Peter. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, Riverbridge is a mixed-use uh, village uh, right off of uh, 290. Our property actually abuts the Solomon Pond Mall, and today we built 204 apartments, a home with suites by Hilton, a big uh, Shell gas station. Uh, daycare center and an adventure park as well as a small cafe where I'm sitting now and we have a few more uh, acres still to develop we've had a good working relationship with the uh, town and I'm embarrassed almost to say this I'm in our 11th year of putting this project together but it is slowly coming to an end 
Um, and we've been uh, blessed to be part of this community, as I said, for over a decade. So Chris, if you make a left turn out of Highland Commons and go down 62 a bit and then make a left towards 290, that's where Matt's um, complex is. Okay, yeah, Roger. I think I think um, I have a general idea of where where that might be. Come on down and have a cup of coffee one day. We'll do. I'll introduce Chris and Matt to each other by email. Um, Jeff, Paul, Jason, any comments or questions or thoughts? I, I don't have any comments or questions. Uh, I, I recognize Chris because I've we've been at the Fifth Factory a bunch of, uh, uh, met several times now, my wife and I. So I think Ann actually spent a bunch of time talking to Chris and had a really good in, uh, interaction with him. So that was great. How is, actually, I do have a question. How is Governor Baker's new limitations? Are you guys going to have to stop being open until 930? Do you have to reduce your capacity at all in any way or? Uh, well, thank you, oh, yeah. Paul. Um, and again, yeah, great meeting you as well. The, um, in terms of Governor Baker's new regulations, um, we are already starting to implement some of those changes. Um, I think the biggest you know, thing for us, it, and it really wasn't that big of a change, is uh, closing at 9.30 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday, as opposed to 10 p.m., which was our previous close. That just um, yeah, has us closing about a half an hour earlier than we originally were. Um, that's not a huge impact you know, for us as of, as of just yet. Uh, in terms of the, um, the masks policy, uh, I think that is always a area of opinion for a lot of people who are looking to regularly exercise. It's, you know, it's, we're all in the same boat together, but I think the most important thing for us is that, um, you know, rather than you know, going against that particular order, it's, it's more of like, you know, complying with it, you know, wearing the mask while exercising does help to spread. Um, I'm sorry, does help to prevent spreading uh, the virus, obviously. And it's really more or less for like the best interest of everyone in our community, because even as a staff that working in the club, we're in the same boat as the members that are exercising there. We want to still, you know, be able to, um, you know, create that community. And to be honest, uh, the response back really hasn't been negative. You know, I think we're trying to do everything that we can to, remain compliant with all of the CDC, you know, guidelines and recommendations and, you know, we'll continue to do so for as, as long as this thing is going to last. Okay. And, and did he, there are new limits, I think, on numbers of people. Are you, are you guys limited or are you big enough that you're not limited to 25 people? I forget what the, I mean, I don't, they consider yours a gathering? Probably not, actually. Um, no. Yeah, I think we aren't necessarily considered a public gathering um, since it's all individual exercise based. Um, in terms of the limits of the, the size of a group, um, that would affect group fitness classes. But we've already, you know, before these regulations came into place, we already put a cap on how many people could be in one space at one time. Uh, it really more or less does affect uh, close quarters rooms. So for example, like a smaller studio, um, we are working with our software partners on helping us to automate our attendance, which really does help us to keep con better control over uh, how, many, uh, how many people you know, per hour we have in terms of occupancy. And it hasn't been a, much of an issue. I think because we opened on October 5th, um, which is uh, a little bit different. Health clubs in Massachusetts were allowed to open on July 6th. So, our capacity hasn't reached the point yet where we would have to put some serious caps on attendance. Okay. Jason, your wife uh, is opening up a studio. I wonder if there's a way that Chris and your wife can integrate with each other. Jason's one of the members. Yeah, maybe. My, my wife is a uh, Pilates instructor. Um, she's been doing Pilates for 15 years um, down in DC. And then when we moved here, she worked down in uh, Westwood. Um, and pre pandemic, we put a studio in the house for her to start teaching from home. Um, we were going to open in March for her to see people in person. And well, that got sidelined. 
Um, so she's been doing Zoom classes with her existing clients since March. Um, she actually hasn't seen anybody in person yet. Um, and really it's, she doesn't want people to have to wear a mask to work out. Um, so she's not really uh, pushing it. Um, so she's just not gonna see people in person until she kind of finds the balance as far as that goes. Um, yeah, got it. I think, um, you, know, we'll, you know, first of all, I'd like to network with, you know, as many individuals in the community as possible. Uh, Jason, I mean, um, if your, your wife is interested in meeting, um, obviously, um, you know, she sounds like she's got a great entrepreneurial uh, endeavor going on there. Um, I know personally, like our facility, we are currently looking for Pilates instructors, um, you know, to, because that's one of the services that we do offer as part of our schedule. Many of our group fitness instructors teach at multiple locations and elsewhere. It's not that uncommon, you know, within that profession to work in multiple locations. Um, but, you know, we're, you know, doing tours and we're taking uh, interviews from instructors all the time. So I'm sure, you know, our, I wouldn't be doing the you know, direct interviewing of those um, instructors, but I could certainly connect it with our group fitness director and, you know, maybe they can at least start talking. Sure, I appreciate that. I can uh, let you guys know if she's interested. Would you two like me to do an email intro? Sure. Okay. Yeah, that would be perfect. All right, I'll do that. Jeff, uh, Jeff is the uh, branch manager of Clinton Savings Bank right in downtown, the metropolis of downtown Berlin. Um, make a left out of the Highland Commons Plaza and eventually you'll come to his, his branch. Jeff, anything you wanna add? So it sounds like you have a, um, a set staff and then rotating instructors that come in for various classes. Uh, that is correct there, Jeff, yes. Okay. How much is your normal, how many is your normal staff there at Fit Factory? Um, I think your, your audio may have broke up a little bit. Can you just repeat your question? Sure. I was just curious how large your regular staff is as opposed to the instructors. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's, we're still hiring, so we haven't you know, hit our, our cap yet in terms of staff. Um, I think a lot of that too is also you know based off of um, like my assessment of like our need as we continue to assess like where our, our peak times are going to be for the business. Um, and every bit factory location is a little bit different in terms of their size and their structure and their overall staff. Um, you know, and then we have we actually in a sense have three different departments from the facility. We have our operations staff, which I manage. We have our group fitness instructors. We also have our personal uh, trainers and fitness uh, staff. And, and that all, those two departments aside, you know, the, which those are continually growing and evolving uh, entities within the club. Now, within the operations side, we typically do have more of like a set staff schedule. So I would say my team right now is about 15 strong. Um, in terms of regular like salaried as well as hourly staff, you know, working to operate the club. Super. Um, Jeff, anything further? I don't think so. Any, uh, any banking opportunities for Clinton Savings, Chris? Oh, we're, you know, absolutely, you know, looking to, yeah, you know, like I said, get out into the community and start making some of those networks and, uh, um, you know, most of the staff that I have are relatively, um, you know, local to the community. So, you know, we can certainly uh, stop on by and, and uh, you know, make some introductions. So what I'll do, rather than have multiple emails, I'll introduce Mark Sargent, who's just popped in, and Chris Bastian, who's uh, with Solomon Pond in a second. But I'll send a group email to everyone, and everyone can make their own connection. Um, but before we continue to Mark, let's talk with Chris Bastian. Chris is the mall manager for two malls, but specifically the Solomon Pond Mall, which is just down the street from Shell Station and Riverbridge, where Matt is. Chris, can you just do a quick intro to Chris Tomei so that um, Chris Tomei has a clue Remedy who you are? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm the general manager at the Solomon Pond Mall and also the Auburn Mall in Auburn, Mass. Um, Salmon Pine Mall, um, as as you know, is right right down the road from you guys. Two story. Oh, I don't know, 20, 
24 or 26 year old building now, uh, 96, I believe it was built, um, you know, anchored by Macy's, Sears, uh, JC Penney, Regal Cinemas, um, uh, you know, uh, right off 290 near, near River Bridge, obviously, a budding River Bridge, as Matt had said. And um, yeah, I mean, we're the, we're the community mall. We're, you know, hopefully, hopefully the place that you're going to come when you need something. Chris, is, there, is there something that you can think of that might be um, a networking opportunity for the two of you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, first of all there, Chris, uh, I, I grew up uh, around the area. So, you know, I remember going to the Salmon Palm Mall, like when I was in high school for, for movies and the like, uh, you know, with the Regal Cinemas there. So, um, yeah, definitely familiar for, for where that location is. And, um, you know, in terms of uh, networking opportunities, absolutely. You know, I think, um, you know, anytime that, um, you yeah, know, there's an event, if you guys, you you know, if you're interested, like we would be able to, you know, support and network that and, you know, and vice versa. Great. Great. So Mark Sargent, say hello. Mark is uh, one of the owners. One of, he and his wife are on the uh, Berlin General Store. Chris, does that, Chris Tomei, does that ring a bell? The downtown general store, the typical little town store? I haven't been down there yet, but I can certainly like make some what, visits. It's what are you waiting adjacent, for, Chris? <laughs> uh, just adjacent to Clinton Savings, just about. But go ahead, Mark. Would you introduce yourself? Oh, good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Sargent. Uh, my wife is off camera, but she's here as well. Um, so we purchased the Berlin store in, in 2019, January. Uh, my daughter had worked at the store for two years previous, three years previous. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Clinton, along with my wife. Uh, so the Berlin General Store was always part of my stops going out in the morning, working construction. Uh, I'm a project manager. I build commercial buildings uh, and developments. Um, I actually retired two years ago and thought it'd be a great idea to buy the store. Um, but I was uh, wooed back into the trade. Um, and so now my daughter is the manager uh, my wife and I work every Saturday at the store, so we have a nice family-run business on Saturdays. Um, we've tried to keep it uh, the, the nice small town um, breakfast place, lunch place. Um, difficult, challenging year, of course, this year with all that's going on. Um, we hit some low, low periods uh, when uh, people just weren't working, so of course they weren't traveling traveling by the store <clears throat> and stopping in for their coffee um, but um, we seem to have come back uh, we're on an uptick again we had a wonderful summer with lobster lobster rolls um, they seem to really hit, hit the the local uh, people uh, everybody working uh, we were over 100 a day on Fridays um, so um, from a business standpoint of view um, you know, we've run into a couple, couple issues. Uh, it's not the greatest of parking, uh, but we knew that going in. But the local police department has been wonderful. Um, they keep traffic moving in the area. Um, and everybody that knows the store knows how to get in and out, which is, which is the challenge. Uh, you, you need to know you have to pull in or back in when you come in so you can pull out easy. Uh, traffic's a good thing, um, but trying to get out of a, a place uh, like a small store like ours is, is difficult, but um, we love it. Uh, we love being part of the community. Um, I don't know how deep you want to go, Peter, as far as our, our situation uh, with the ventilation system. Um, I don't know if we could bring that up. I could, I could maybe just write the letter. I was going to write a letter to the selectmen. So Mark, let me, uh, what I wanted to do is introduce Chris, Chris and you to each other and Matt as well for the first part of the meeting and then get deeper into each of your issues. I know Chris Tomei had a short amount of time. Are you still good or you, can you hang out for a couple minutes? Um, it's, it's, it's just about time I have to get out to you know, my next event. Um, okay. Yeah, I guess. So how can the Economic Development Committee of the Town of Berlin help you, Chris Tomei, since you've got to go? I think really, as uh, like I said, we've been open for about a month. Obviously, uh, we've been in development. Um, I came into the project maybe about 15, 16 months ago um, as the general manager, but I know it's definitely been about a three to 
to four year period um, where we've been working on getting into uh, the Highland Commons area. I think at this point, since we've been open for a month, really, I think the most important thing for us is just uh, being connected with the community um, and starting to develop, you know, a lot of the yeah, relationships, you know, within the community. Um, and at this point, um, you know, continue to just to continue to do that networking. Um, and if there's any additional, you know, things that uh, we can do, like as a fitness company, to to help the, you know, the town and, and uh, of Berlin, you know, then that's something that, you know, as a, com a corporation, yeah, you know, we're always invested in, and and uh, you know, things things like that are 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 sort of you know part of our part of our mission you know statement and then instead of you know always like business first it's it's really building that community so yeah i think a starting point is just making these you know, networking connections and uh, i know they take time to develop and you know things that that's cool. so, we'll work on that. so i'll send a group email with everyone's email address and then each of you can reach out especially chris tomei since you're newest sort of to our group okay, well, um, well thank you everybody thank you for including me and um, if there's something the EDC can do for you, reach out to any one of us or all of us. Thanks, Chris. Will do. Thanks Thank for you. Coming, Chris. Have a good one. Okay, so um, Mark, Matt, and Chris, any of you three rushed? Nope. Today. I'm not. Okay. So which one of you would like to? Chris, I'm most curious. So, Chris, fill us in on how. The nightmare, I mean, the uh, progress of the mall is going. The progress, well, um, I'll share what I can, I guess, right? Um, yeah, so obviously, you know, it's, uh, you know, not like most other industries, extremely challenging this year. Closed for close to three months. We reopened, uh, we'll back it up, we, we closed on March 18th. We reopened on June 10th. Um, we reopened with uh, some shortened hours. We just recently, as of last Friday, went back to our normal mall hours. Um, so we're back to uh, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, Monday through Saturday and uh, 11 to 6 on Sundays now. Uh, and we'll hold those those hours pretty much through the holiday season. We'll, we'll open at 6 a.m. on Black Friday um, and perhaps a couple earlier openings three or four days before Christmas. Other than that, we'll probably hold those normal hours right through the holiday season. Um, you know, specific stores, obviously, you know, not only at our mall, but um, nationally, um, struggling to survive, obviously. Um, we've lost a few. Um, don't want to get into laying out who all those are or, or certainly making any lists uh, in this format per se but um if you if you visited you know we've lost we've lost a few we also have a few coming um which is good <clears throat> not just holiday tenants but some others that have signed on for um you know a little bit of term uh, which is a good thing um you know i think everyone is just a little curious of how everything's gonna you know play out i, I you know i'm curious to see what this holiday season looks like um and that obviously remains to be seen um, um but you know that's that's sort of where we are I and mean, we're, we're trying to make it business as usual um traffic is up and down to be to be honest some days are are quite normal uh others are quite slow um i think it just depends if you know what the customer needs and you know if it dictates they need to come out <clears throat> etc um so um yeah that, i mean that's sort of where we are Chris, aside from a reduced assessment, what can the EDC or the town of Berlin do to help you? Well, I mean, I think, um, you know, you and I talk, you know, every so often and I'll, you know, pick your brain. I think, I think for, for us, um, you know, if you guys get inquiries um, for folks looking for space or, you know, someone there on your team has an idea of, you know, hey, where could this business go? You know, of a business that wants to expand, et cetera. Um, throw my way and let's see if it's something that we could we could do you know like I said we've got some spaces right now so um, we want to we obviously want to get those filled I think I think that would be the would be the best thing certainly in, in the, uh, the immediate future so Chris and Matt you both have a common goal which is to come up with a restaurant um, and each of your properties and you've both been struggling any 
comments to each other about that? Any shared ideas or is it just a virtual hopeless cause? I think it's a little bit hopeless for, for, for the moment. We're, we're hopeful that in the spring, we can just kind of take it back out to the, to the public. We still have a 5,000 square foot retail pad site uh, approved for a 3,500 square foot restaurant in front of the hotel. And we're just gonna have to see what the market will bear. Uh, we negotiated very hard for a destination restaurant uh, large scale, and that went away uh, partially because of the of the COVID scenario. And but we've got a lot of people living down here now, and we need to feed them. So hopefully, some restaurateur uh, wants to take a shot at coming back down to River Ridge. Chris and Matt, is there any leads that you feel you should share with each other that you failed at that maybe the other could use? I haven't, in fairness, I haven't had an inquiry in ages. You know, it, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a, it can't be any better from a commercial standpoint than it is right now. Uh, so much so that the brokers, anybody I talk to says, let's talk in the spring. You know, I'm soliciting them to find out who they might be representing, who might want to come over here. And there's just no activity at all. Um, it's just, um, and there's also a lot of empty restaurants. If there's a restaurant tour that's looking to put himself in business with another, a second, third, or fourth location, he's going to be able to negotiate from, from strength. There's going to be a lot of empty buildings and some vacant land like ours already zoned for a restaurant. It's a, it's a buyer's market. Chris, do you have the same impression? Yeah, I would, I would agree. I mean, um, you know, I'm out there canvassing for a lot of different uses, not, not just the, the restaurant. Um, in some cases, more, uh, I'm putting efforts into other things more than the restaurant, but I would agree there's, from my standpoint, uh, you know, I'm not even getting, you know, I, I'm, I'm putting the feelers out, I'm putting the emails out, what, what have you, I'm just getting no response. I'm not even getting the courtesy response back to say no thank you. There's just, yeah, I mean, everyone is absolutely. Just, everyone's just hunkering down. You're very good. Well, thanks, Chris. Thanks for the update, and thanks for the two of you. Um, Matt, do you want to give us a quickie on uh, developments? Uh, what sure. you're seeking from the town? Um, I think maybe some of the guys know, maybe not. Okay. Well, um, we're we're. We're, we thought we were coming through COVID, and of course now we, we're spiking again. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect things over the next few months. I'm pleased to report that we have 109 uh, apartments rented, people living there, uh, seeing, seemingly all very pleased, but also very stationary. We have a 5,800 square foot uh, clubhouse that's hardly being used by the residents because people are just, they're in a kind of a lockdown mode, almost like it was the middle of January in a normal year, you know, people kind of honker in when it gets tremendously cold outside. It's like we're in the middle of January. People just aren't moving around the way we hoped. Uh, but we are grateful to have the apartments. Uh, the hotel stayed open. Uh, its occupancy rate, although very low, was, was probably the strongest in the Metro West area because of our extended stay model. Uh, so we were blessed there. Uh, Norea, lost 50% of its business for a good part of the year. It's slowly getting a little bit busier. And uh, the daycare center, I, I'm guessing right now, uh, is it 50% where it was when I speak with the tenant? Uh, he does think his business will get back to where it was. He doesn't think it's gonna happen until perhaps March of, uh, of 21 between a combination of parents just getting too tired of being home uh, with the kids and a COVID vaccine and other uh, obvious uh, obstacles that they have. Uh, the cafe and the liquor store uh, are much slower than they were before the, uh, uh, before the pandemic. Uh, that's to be expected. The office parks are, uh, I, I, I drove them last Friday. They were getting a little bit busier uh, but it's almost, it's, it's a little depressing when you go through all the places we used to be delivering our, our uh, wares to. 
uh, just to only see a handful of cars there. We, we again, hope that comes back. Uh, we were very blessed that we had a lot of traffic from people just going through town on stay vacations, people going from one point to another, visiting relatives. Uh, a lot of people would go there and they come back and have a sandwich or some pizza with us, uh, perhaps get a six pack on the way home. That went well. We do have a, uh, an article that was gonna go in front of the town board for the December 5th town meeting. That will still take place Although that meeting, as many of you know, has now been moved because of the new COVID restrictions to at least a February. River Bridge uh, has 3.7 acres left where the old Reese store is, uh, basically from the daycare center all the way to the cafe. And we're proposing to put uh, up to 30 uh, small townhouse condominium styled uh, units there, and that will need the support of the citizens. So in the next several months, now that it's been pushed off to February, we will be looking for people to support us uh, in making this zoning change. Uh, I'll preface this by saying, originally we had promised the community 140,000 square feet of retail, mostly because of the hotel, uh, but with the other businesses we built here, we did get, we will be up at 105,000 even with this approval. It's very important to, to the CETIs, we've been here 11 years, to be able to put some finality to the project and make it look complete as you're driving on your way into the community. So we have a great developer and we're very optimistic that the town will support us. We have gone to the town twice in the last several years uh, with relatively big asks. And when, we, when we've asked the town to step up to help Riverbridge, they have in the past, we're hoping that they will again. Uh, in the future, uh, but not at, prob not at this town, particular town meeting, we do hope to do some other things uh, with the cafe, uh, particularly with uh, uh, getting a drive through one day, but that seems to be off in the, uh, it isn't in our immediate plans. Uh, and I, my other job, uh, aside from figuring out what to do with this land, is uh, to find a, a retail use or the land in front of the uh, hotel. But we, we've been guardedly optimistic as we've gotten through COVID. Matt, do you have access to share, which I invite you to do, some of the images of the condos that you're talking about? The town we will, we, I, I obviously have some. They're, they're in a working format right now. They have been shared when we've gone to the planning board but anybody who's asked me for them, I've, I've begged off a week or so, but I'll send them to you as soon as I have something. Peter. I was wondering if you'd share them right now, just so. Just so oh, I, 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 I wouldn't even dare try, only because I'd, I'd knock myself off of this computer. Okay. Um, but you're going to send a group email out. I will, within a week, I will send everybody the latest plans okay. uh, of uh, the way they are designed now. They're in a, they're in a bit of a state of flux as to whether we're going to have uh, we're going to ask for 28, 30 units, uh, depending on how the final layout is designed. And we're getting input from different town officials about that right now. Uh, so this is a, a, a moving target. It's a work in progress, but it, it is very, very important to River Bridge. Uh, we have a five and a half million dollar water and sewer system that we had to build. It took us a long time to build it. It took us a long time to figure out how to finance it. And putting these uh, condos in place uh, will help the SETI family tremendously. Uh, and we, we're hoping again for the town's support. Uh, Paul, Jeff, Jason, do you guys wanna sort of comment on the project or ask questions just so Matt gets a sense of what your insight and input might be to such a project? Just give him a little, a little bit of a feel or some questions so he can take that back to the family and integrate that into his plans. At this point, I think Matt might have more familiarity with this project than any of us. <laughs> it's been going for a while. Uh, so many folks on the planning board and the board of selectmen or select board have some positive and negative opinions. It'd be good to get your objective insight so that Matt can have that 
in his tool bag. So if Matt, do you want to describe yeah, anything I, further? I, I will preference that over the last decade, many people have talked to us about affordable housing and the, and the need for people either to stay in the community as, as they downsize or almost as a, uh, just as important a place to come to where they can afford to be in the community because it's very hard to come into this community because almost everything is priced north of 600,000. So when we build these condominiums, they will be at the affordable level so that it can attract first time home buyers. Something uh, the different town officials have talked about it with us over the years. I mean, I think housing over there is, is, is pretty, pretty ideal and with the mall around the corner and you know, with you guys still seeking restaurants and food. I mean, you know, most of the developments I've been part of, it's it's trying to create the whole community in one um, so people can walk and shop and eat and dine and, you know, get everything they need without leaving. Um, and it's difficult. And it's even more difficult right now as to both of what you guys have said about the restaurant world, um, you know, it's going to be, I'll be shocked if it's, if there's answers by spring, you know. Oh, just to start, you got to start conversations sometime. Yeah, no, 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 I, yeah. No, we, we you know, we, uh, and having the extra uh, 28 uh, homes will also help attract uh, that restaurateur perhaps to the community. And, uh, you know, the, ca the cafe sells a lot of food. Uh, it did a whole, you know, it did more obviously when all these office parks were open, but people do need a place to eat around here. Yeah, for sure. General have liked our, uh, uh, our product. And uh, we also compete with the sergeants over at the Berlin General Store. Now people in the community have two good places to go get a good sandwich. Yeah. Uh, and, and competition is good. And there's, there, uh, we think we've both been a strong addition to the community in the last couple of years. To, I'm speaking not about Riverbridge, but about the cafe and, of course, the general store. Matt, when you say, affor when you say affordable, do you, does that include, um, I guess, what was in the apartments and stuff, low income? Or is that not, I mean, no. again, you know, the, the town worries about the percentage of low income saying about 10%. Oh, the apartments got river uh, got this community well, well above the ten percent. Understood, right? But yeah. No, if we build them, the there will be two. There'll there'll be two or three units at what the state considers the affordable uh, level. What I'm referring to is all thirty or twenty eight of the units being affordable for first time home buyers. I understand, right? Yeah. And is for this particular community and listening to the different boards, not, not in the last month while we've had this idea of putting this together, but over the years, uh, this is something people have talked about us, that the need, it's, it's very hard to stay in this town if you go away to school and it's very hard to, to downsize in this town. There's just no place to go. So we hope we can fill a niche. Uh, the developer's market study says there is a great niche here for this level of housing. And like everything else at Riverbridge, we'll do it well. It will look great when you drive through. Paul, do you have a first impression if you like the idea of these condos or not so much? I, I don't really have a first impression. I have, I have to think about it and, you know, I think I was hoping for something other than more residential development down there. I will say that. I mean, I, know, I appreciate, Matt, that it's very difficult given the current environment. Um, would have been nice to see some sort of retail. Some, I don't know, you've been looking for restaurants and so on. Yeah. So, you know, we've got what you said, we have 204. You've already got 109 rented and there's like 204 units behind there. So I'm not sure we need another 30. So that's my initial reaction, Peter. Uh, let, me, uh, let me address that a concern because many residents in town uh, have a similar concern. Uh, well before uh, COVID, we, we've spent a decade trying to attract retail. We initially had hoped it would be supermarkets where the hotel is. There is nobody that we haven't talked to. 
We just don't have the partially because of high lift comments, partially because of Wegmans, the type of uh, commercial that we might have been able to attract, that we hope to have been able to attract when we came here, being right off 290, literally went to the west and to the east of us and to, into two very nice complex. And we got squeezed a bit. But by example, the pure, the original Pure Hockey building sat empty for seven years. The Old Navy and Sports Authority buildings have now are now going on their fourth year uh, as the general manager at the mall. Chris says retail's very, very hard, but it was very hard two years ago. It just got a lot harder with the pandemic. Studies are looking for an opportunity to finish the project to make it look spectacular and uh, you know continue to be good neighbors to the community. Thanks, Matt. Jeff, what's your what's your banking spin on this? What's your spin on the uh, prospect of some more condos or townhomes? Um, I mean, more residents means more opportunities for banking in general, but um, it's more mortgage opportunity. It's more people that will bank either here or somewhere else. It's generally speaking, as the town grows, that gives more opportunity for the banking world in many, many ways. So that's one of the reasons that commercial lenders like to get involved in projects like these to begin with is because it helps grow on multiple levels. Uh, Thank you. So I, I think any any growth is is good as long as it's, you know, done well. And so far the projects have gotten done, been done well. As, so I'm excited to have more projects continuing. Um, Berlin is a very small town and it's got to continue to grow or it's going to see its residential taxes grow. Thank you for bringing that up, Chris. Uh, Greg, uh, we, we are good taxpayers. Yeah. Uh, and the apartments to date with 108 units have only brought two children to the school system. There was concern when we were originally putting these together that there would be over 20, but it doesn't look like with the size of the units that we're going to be a burden to the community with school children, positively or negatively, because there, there's a desire to have some children in this town also by certain people. So let me, let me um, bring this to this part to the close. Let's do a little straw poll, if I may, for Matt to take back to his family of what we think. I think, Jason, you're sort of favorable towards it. Is that fair? Sure. It's fair. Uh, Paul, you're kind of lukewarm. That's fair. Lukewarm. Lukewarm. Jeff, you're? I, I would be. In and I'm always in favor of growth as long as it's done well, so. And I'd, I'd echo what Jeff just said as well. So there's there's some input, it's it's advisory at best, and it works. Oh, come on well. down and have a cup of coffee with me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that with a lot of people. That's part of my job yep. now. But I'd love yep. to have a cup of coffee with you. We will have more final plans, and it's people like you, I have to I have to convince that this, uh, that's, this is a good, uh, opportunity for both parties, the cities and the Well, Jason, Jeff, and I are, are sort of favorable towards it. So you, no, we, less, I appreciate it. We're less uh, uh, needing to be convinced. I, I mean, I think the tax consequences of you putting in these uh, townhomes is, is a positive thing. And if, like Jeff, Jeff says, if they're well done. Yep. And, then and I look, think they'll, be they'll, sure. be in, they'll be at the malls, they'll be at the fitness centers. They'll be at the stores, you know, they'll be, they'll be hiring landscapers. The developer will be hiring snow plowers. And we, the, the cities have made a big deal about hiring locally. If you drive through here, I know you, we've employed an awful lot of people from the, the, our actual community here and all the local uh, trades people within, you know, 10 miles of here. And uh, uh, that will continue. This, you know, this is uh, a uh, building 23 townhomes is, is a big, effort and it will supply a lot of good quality paying jobs to a lot of people relatively close to this community and a lot of people that actually live in this community. Yeah, you have to promise not to put up a sign to stay away from the sergeant's store. 
No, I never have. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's making a lot of sense now, Matt. Um, when you first started building, I visited the superintendent's trailer on a couple of occasions, and I dropped off muffins and coffees. Good for and you. I said, I said, point them to the general store, not knowing that the whole area was owned by the Sennies. <laughs> so <laughs> it's making a little more sense now. <laughs> no, no, no. It, uh, it, 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 the, the construction people between the between the gas station and, and my small cafe, they yeah. had to make an effort to get to your store. That said, Mr. Absolutely. They drove right out of my driveway to your store. I could see the light <laughs> on their chins as they, as they were going back to work. <laughs> well, I, I put the, a map the food, together. The food at your place is great. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. You're competing yeah. with the sergeants. Yeah, I, we, had, we had put a map together showing as 1.8 miles from the construction site and they can go in a circle right back 1.8 miles. So we, yeah. we tried to do our due diligence to steal some of the customers anyway. Oh, no, no. There were 100, at their peak, there were 150 of them here a day and they weren't all in our cafe or, in our, or at the gas station. Uh, we're, we're blessed that some of them were. We, you know, we right. do business, uh, particularly this past four months. Uh, every customer was precious. Uh, right. Can, I, can, office parks. can I suggest we had, a, we had an advantage over you with the office parks? You know, can I suggest that Holly and Mark, Holly and Mark visit with you, Matt? Can you two make a point? You and your wife make a point of visiting with Matt because I think somehow there's some some networking that can be done and some shared leads, some shared ideas, and Absolutely. of course we have, we have different products. So yeah. we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So that said, Matt, hang I'll, on a second. I'm going to come up and have a cup of coffee with you on a Saturday because I know that's when you work now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not this Saturday. I have a golf tournament. So <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, you've got a beautiful weather for it. So, Jeff, I, I do have one question. Do you foresee any additional SBA uh, programs that may be going out? Do you hear anything on the, on the line? I mean, the SBA really saved us personally. Uh, to be able to get those loans and pay for our, our vendors, our, you know, our utility bills. It's a small store. It's an old building. Uh, Midsummer, we're 2500 a month for electricity alone. So those, those loans were, were very beneficial to us. And I just didn't know, um, with a couple of the things that are going on uh, with the local fire department and building inspector, something like that may, may help us uh, exponentially as well. So we were not an SBA lender before the PPP program started. So I picked up some of these programs as we went. Um, the, the PPP program itself is, is pretty much done now. It's going into its forgiveness. Yeah. I haven't heard anything new from SBA, but Massachusetts does have a program, which I, I don't know if you want me to summarize that now, Peter, or wait until... Um, well, let's, let's, um, I mean, I, I guess, why not? Sure. I was going to have Mark talk about uh, an obstacle he's faced with, but let's, it's a great segue. Jeff, go for it, please. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get this to share. So Mark, just Mark and Matt, just to give you a perspective and Chris for that matter, um, on our agenda is, uh, for Jeff to talk about the CARES Act and uh, any, any other applicable benefits to Berlinites. All right, can we see this COVID-19 grant for small, sure mass, small businesses? Sure. Everyone else can see it too as well. Go for right. it, Jeff. So we're currently actually in the middle of the application timeline. Um, it'll close next week. Uh, there are two programs, uh, well, let's go requirements are that you have a physical um, establishment in Massachusetts. Your mu business must be a for-profit, um, must have uh, be able to document a loss of income due to COVID-19. Business must currently be in operation, must be in good standing prior to 630, 2019, and you must be in good standing with your town. Uh, it doesn't work for real estate rentals or sales businesses. Uh, it doesn't work for anyone under 18 or chains or liquor stores or weapons or firearms or cannabis. 
um, it's different from the PPP program or the uh, or the disaster loans. Uh, it's for there are two programs really. They're both for 50 employees or or fewer. Um, the main bit of difference is these are not first come first serve. Um, there the application portal is open for three weeks, and upon the closure of the portal, they'll look at all the applications and rank them, and push out the money accordingly as to the, where the need is most. There are two different pots of money. Um, one is for businesses with five or fewer employees um, that are have mortgages or tenant at will applications and they're there to help relieve specifically you're paying your mortgage or your lease requirement. Um, I'm not gonna go through this. I can make this all available for people to read it on their own, but um, the other one is um, through the Commonwealth. This is for 50 or fewer. You can still have five or fewer and still apply for this version of it. It's just the requirements are a little bit less stiff. Um, priority will be given to the businesses that check one or more of the, follow of the following boxes, women, minority or veteran owned, uh, a gateway city, that's not going to be Berlin, um, unable to previously get a PPP loan or economic development uh, loan, and those especially hard hit like hospitality. Um, both programs, the period for application closes next week. The zero to five is um, employee program is only up to 25,000. The 50 employee program is up to 75,000. Um, and it goes through when those disbursements would take place as well. Again, I'm not gonna go through in detail on the requirements. I'll make this available later, but there are different requirements for the five or fewer versus the 50 or fewer. And then there's some common requirements as well. And this was, all this information is available at the empoweringsmallbusinesses.org. Um, and then there was a good summary that the Asbit Chamber of Commerce uh, helped to put this together. Can you, uh, can you bring that back for a second and go back to the page you were on? Which page? So you see Secretary Keneally, he spoke to us uh, some years ago, as did Bob Nelson. And we, the town and the EDC are friendly with them. So uh, it's a connection we've got. And um, who administers this, Jeff? Uh, this is through the state directly. So it's, it's empoweringsmallbusinesses.org. And the, the application is on the website with all uh, Chris, is it a grant or a loan? I wasn't sure. I missed the first page there. Uh, so the... It's a grant. Grant. Okay. Is this funded by the feds or funded by the state? This is through the state. It's, it, uh, it's administered through the state. I believe the funding was made available through the feds. So given that we've got uh, eight days to go, there's not much time. No, and- It might I, be good for my cafe. It's certainly worth looking into. I mean, yeah, and, and we and we we obviously like all small businesses. Mm -hmm. The programs were made available to us through our through the, through. Uh, I guess it was Bay State Savings uh, that that was timely for us. Uh, I think it was timely for most small business owners like myself uh, as it relates to the cafe. Uh, but I and I am going to check that. I mean, we've checked different things in the past. <laughs> And, and it hasn't, we've decided not to do certain things. It might be right in our wheelhouse. Anything further, Jeff? Uh, that's just about all I had on that. As again, there's a lot more information available there. It's just, I, I didn't want to, you know, take no, 10 that's, minutes. That's to great. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. You're frozen. Your video is frozen, but we can hear you. Yeah, I, I lost my video as well. It's probably something with the sharing, so. It's all good. So I, I know Mark 
Mark, give us a, a very, very short presentation about the store because we all know it and then go into your obstacle if you would. Okay, um, ignorance is bliss, I guess is the uh, headline it should be. Um, I'm aware of different codes. I, I work with codes every day. Uh, when we bought the store, uh, we were assured that everything was uh, up to code. There was no violations. Uh, the fire um, system had tags. Uh, the hood had tags. Uh, we just never looked at them. So we bought the store in 19. Uh, we started cleaning, doing our due diligence, and we noticed that the inspections had not been done since 2016. Uh, when we called in the proper people to do the inspections and to clean the hood and fire um, suppression system, uh, we were told that the hood no longer meets code uh, according to today's standards. So I reached out to the fire chief and the building inspector and I said, okay, what, what can we do? Um, so bottom line, um, I think I pissed the chief off because I asked him how it was not inspected for three years. Um, and he told me he could shut me down that day. So they gave me a one year waiver to replace the hood, replace the Ansel system um, and make it to code. Um, I've gotten three prices to date, um, all 25 to $28,000. Um, it's just not a pill that we can swallow at this point. Um, so that's basically what I was saying. I didn't know if there was grants available, uh, if the town could access us a waiver. The issue with code is it's so sticky that um, there's liabilities. So the town now knows about it. The fire chief knows about it. Building inspector knows about it. So if something were to happen, um, there could be a liability to the town as well. So I completely understand where they're coming from. Um, the issue is that we don't have friolators. We cook no, no grease. We have, the hood is just for our, our grill. It's not even a uh, char broiler. Um, it's a flat top grill. So the hood is by code covers that, but it does not cover the fresh air that's required, the makeup air that is now required by code to come in. So I'm kind of in a sticking point. I have until um, the end of the year to conform um, I don't know what they're going to do, but with COVID and such, uh, you know, it wasn't even something our PPP loan covered our, our utility bills in our employees. Um, and it was not, we received, how much did we receive? 19,000? Yeah. Yeah, we re received just over 17, $18,000 that uh, was used towards our employees and our, our utilities. So uh, it wouldn't even have covered the hood to begin with. So Basically, the reason I'm here is to see what's available. If there's something available um, by a grant, a community development loan, I'm writing a letter to the selectman and the building inspector to see if I can get any, an additional timeline for the waiver. Uh, we have cleaned the hood uh, on two occasions, uh, and we know that the system's up and running for Ansel, so uh, we're still good and safe. Um, the last thing we would want to do is have something happen to a building and, you know, personal uh, tragedy, that's for sure. We want nothing to do with something like that. So basically that's the help I would, that we would need. Matt, you, you faced many hurdles with the town. What advice would you give Mark? I'll come and have a cup of coffee with you. I'm just not that comfortable um, uh, that's, that's, on, our, that's good. Our, on our relationships with the community. Uh, including the, the, the fire uh, uh, officials in the uh, town. We, we put together a brand new building and uh, they had us put together a fairly extensive uh, hood project from a sizing and costing standpoint for the size of our establishment. And we, we basically uh, shrugged our shoulders and did it. And you're right, $25,000 is a, just a frightful amount of money in a small business. You've only got so many seats, you've only got so many sunny days, and so many parking spaces outside. Yeah. So a lot of coffees. Problem. So you two can chat offline. Anyone else? Jason, Paul, Jeff? Uh, 
I wish I had some insight for him. Uh, the loans and that type of stuff are out of my wheelhouse. So Mark, Jason runs a Wegmans. He's got a multitude of headaches. Understood. So would it be valuable if one of us, um, Mark, interfaced with the fire chief and or the select board or the other agencies to code enforcement to try to smooth things out? Um, so I'm writing a letter and, and it's just pretty much what I just stated. And it's just to see, I wanted to start on a slow uh, because it is a code issue and, and I understand that. Um, but I just wanted to, to not uh, approach it the wrong way, Peter, I guess is the way to say it. I didn't want to go behind anyone's back. I'd rather be up front and say, okay, hey, chief, uh, building inspector, you look at, this is what we're up against. You know, is there anything we can do uh, to elongate the waiver, um, you know, until I can get something. It, it's difficult. It's a really difficult spot. Okay. Well, I think maybe we can chat, maybe you and Mark and Peter, the two of us can chat offline a little bit as well. Okay. Anything else? So Mark, aside from the uh, hood nightmare, how's, how's it going? Is it is business picking up? Is there anything else we can do? I have an idea to throw your way. It has, you know, we, we were lucky to make it through. Uh, we did uh, cut our hours. Uh, we used to be six to seven, six a.m. to seven, uh, six days a week. And then Sundays were seven to one. Uh, we've decreased down to 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, basically because we weren't getting the traffic at night from people working. We weren't getting that, that the passers by that were stopping by for their, their milk and, um, you know, lottery tickets or what it may be at the end of the day. Um, so we did decrease our hours to five o'clock, uh, Sundays we decreased from, uh, to seven to 1130. Um, not the end of the world. Um, but uh, it, it seems to have helped us employee wise and our overhead costs uh, seem to have brought those down. Um, the, the one issue that was uh, quite interesting to us was we had sent a letter to the board about outdoor dining uh, before the COVID happened. And um, all we were gonna do is uh, we had several people, a lot of bikers come by, a lot of bicycles, bicyclists come by. Um, and they stopped at the store. They stopped at the store for gallons of water or uh, power drinks or something. Um, and they, they usually would say, boy, it'd be really nice if you had a couple tables outside that we could sit at and just relax to get off our bikes for a little while. So we, we put a letter into the selectmen and requested outdoor tables. And um, we, were, we were shut down because we're within 100 feet of a public water supply. And... We, 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 there's a well at the back of the building and we, we said to them, you know, we're not cooking out there. We're not all of these people to sit. And we went to the board of health and um, they basically didn't want to hear anything about it. It was like, nope, you're within a hundred feet. There's no way to get around that buffer. Uh, you can't have outdoor tables and dining. So to us being the new business uh, entrepreneurs, we were thinking, boy, it would have been easier just to put the tables out there and ask for forgiveness uh, then ask for permission. And, you know, we don't want to do that coming into a new community, but when things like that occur, it's almost like, you know, we were better off just, we should have just done what people told us and put the, the, the tables out there. So now we can't put them out there because we knowingly know that we're in violation of the, uh, the public water supply. So that was interesting. I didn't know if there was a possibility we could go around again this summer, maybe and ask again. Um, but the Neshoba Board of Health is difficult. Um, I've had several communications and dealings, building houses, lots and, and things like that previously. So um, I don't know if I'm going to get anywhere with that as either. That's really surprising. What would tables, how would tables impact water supply? People, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, so that, that may be one. Would there be any chance to maybe talk with um, the church and see if they could do something on that? That side of the road that you could make use of? Um, you know, we didn't even, didn't even entertain that. 
Um, but there's a couple, there's a bench over there every Friday. So yeah. Yeah. That, well, that's during COVID. I don't know if you'd seen the chief and all the, the, uh, old timers that come in our store typically and sit on every Friday. They had, they have the meeting with the the police chief Mm -hmm. and all they did was they moved it over to that, the lawn on the church instead. So every Friday morning you'd see 10, 12, 15 people over there just standing around having coffee, having a conversation. I've walked down once or twice myself. So. (laughs) So, Mark, I brought the following idea to your predecessors, the previous owners, which is to put an electric charging station in your store at someone's cost, yours, the town, Grant, I'm not sure, and they kind of shot it down. I know you have parking issues, to say the least, but do you, do you think that would be something you'd be interested in doing, given the right financial structure? So, I, I think the first thing I do is we don't own the building. So it's owned by Jane Sawyer, which gives us a couple other setbacks. Uh, we've been trying to do reparations and get it painted and just upgrade it. And for two years, we've been promised it's going to get done. Um, I've done some woodworking there and I've, I'm a carpenter by trade. Um, and we've uh, done a lot of work on the interior. So to us, it's not very appealing or appeasing to the eye when you drive by. Um, you know, we have signs, but we have a, not what you'd call a storefront, it's a home, and but it's peeling paint and broken gutters and uh, front steps are broken. And we've asked on several occasions, um, and we've been, we've been told that it, it's gonna be done. We just haven't seen anything happen. And maybe two years this January, we'll own the store. So, but if, if you get past the hurdles of Jane Sawyer or whatever they may be. Do you like the idea? Does that seem attractive to you? I do. Um, I, I mean, I think they could come right. There's a pole right in the parking lot next to National Lumber uh, that provides power. It would probably be easy to do a tap off that pole to a charging station right in that area. Mm-hmm. Okay. What does everyone else think of it? Some of you are new to the idea, Jason and Jeff. I think that would attract uh, users to the store and electric users to the socket. What do you think, Jason, Jeff? Um, I, there are several not that far away uh, up yeah. at the Highland Commons. Right. Yep. Um, I, I don't know if the expense would bring out in enough new business with the other stations nearby. Uh, I agree. I, I think that's something you need to check out. I don't even know those other those other stations when I drive by Peter are mostly empty behind the they're behind the Panera, right, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. I mean I mean if those were packed and if that was working for Panera, then it certainly could work for the general store. But I'd be interesting to figure out whether it's actually helping him. Mm. I have a vacation rental with a charger on it. It's been used once in five years. Okay, Mark, anything further? Otherwise, we'll maybe we'll chat offline. No, uh, I'm good. I appreciate uh, you guys taking the time and sending yeah, me I'm the- so, I'm, I'm sorry we haven't really come up with a uh, solution for you, but let's see Mark, if we can chip away at it. I'm not a quitter. <laughs> and Mark, I'll, I'll have um, I'll have May Linda reach out and see if she has any ideas as well. Okay, great. Thank you. So stick around, Matt, Mark. Chris, we'll just do a little housekeeping. Um, can we talk about the minutes, guys? Did anyone look at them? Yes, I, I read through. Yep, but they're fine with me. Jason? Okay. Yeah, I read them yesterday. So do I hear a motion to approve the minutes by those that were participants for each of the, the four, April 21st, May 21st, July 21st, I'm sorry, 1st and uh, September 1st. So your motion to approve them as written? Motion to approve. Any second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, Jason? Yay or nay? Yay. Paul? Yay. Jeff? Yay. And Peter is a yes. 
Okay, so that gets that out of the way. Paul, any any input on Highland Commons? I have reached out to Jed repeatedly, and I have not, and I, as recently as yesterday and today by phone, and I have not heard anything. So I have no update. Fair enough. Um, I have an update that I shared with Paul informally. I stopped into the liquor store at Highland Commons, and it's in construction, active construction. And um, I spoke to what appears to be the foreman who says that they expect the CFO November 6th and to be open before Thanksgiving. I thought that was a shock given the litigation that we were hearing about, but they uh, opened it up. What do, they, what do they expect on November 6th? Oh, uh, certificate of occupancy, is that what you mean? Right. That's right. Okay. I only know as much as I've just mentioned. Um, I just think it's unbelievable given the litigation lockup that that uh, we had heard about. So I wonder if they were just issued another license. I doubt that. I highly doubt that. That's a town. Well, you know, it's a town and state thing. And if another license was to be had, I think the Senes might be first in line. I'm at. So Peter, you said <laughs> to... I, I, from the liquor salesman down here, we've heard the same dates. The sixth November up for Thanksgiving. And I heard that somehow the litigation that it it had, it had taken care of itself. Well there's I... they got together and made a deal somewhere along the line. Yeah. That I had heard through this liquor salesman that will be servicing them who do service us. So I wonder if BJ's will just close their gate. I've heard they won't be closing their gate. Uh, they're just gonna, you know, they'll deal with it. They'll, they'll have two pizzerias in the same town, you know, mm -hmm. and it is good for the second, for the first pizzeria when there's a second pizzeria. Well, that was, that was the license. So that's interesting. No. I no, there's so there's beer and wine at BJ's and a full liquor license at Highlands. At Highlands, right? Yeah, yeah. different animals. I yeah. thought the yeah. litigation was with that license, though. No, it was oh. to stop that. It was it was to try to not that well. It was to try to keep the board of out whatever it is the alcohol board from granting the license. And yeah, so BJ, BJ's was just disputing, letting them they build were, that. They, gotcha. They were, gotcha. That's correct. Their, their plan really here was just to get another two or three years or hopefully ever, but at least two or three years of no competition. And it sounds like they settled. And Jed, I am able to get in touch with Jed, so I don't know what the deal is. Okay. Anyway, so that's the liquor update. And that's all I have to say for... Helen Commons. Jason? So that website, I had the same issue with my name as Jeff's name um, being stuck up top there and not being able to move it down. So I'm going to reach out to James um, this week and see if he can help get it moved. I don't know if it's a time thing because um, mine was, again, when I first joined, my name was stuck up there for quite a while, Peter. Um, so uh, I'll reach out and just see if what we can do to get his name dropped down to be in line with the group. Um, mm. I did get both our bios put in. Um, um, really no real updates with the website uh, or, or our page other than getting Jeff's name dropped. Uh, in line with ours. Um, the sign thing, uh, so I've reached out to some folks within the town as far as what we need. Um, what we really need to do is kind of solidify where we want signs um, and then get with the depart uh, DPW and understand what, whose property it's on, what do we need to do, do we need to get permission, you know, um, um, so I, I kind of been stumped with that because our first meeting, I had circled some areas where I thought signs would be good, um, you know, ballpark areas. Um, and then I, it, 
I feel like I need your guys' input more on where we would put these signs and then I can work on more of a formal proposal as far as getting that permission uh, and what it would take. Jason, can I suggest that you put your ideas on a, on a map? Again? And, and, yeah. and distribute it? Yeah. And then, then if there's some discussion to be had, we can have it over a group email. If not, we can have the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have the, the map I shared with you guys. Yeah. I don't even know how long ago now. <laughs> it's probably a uh, year, right? Yeah. But how can, I'll, we, uh, how can we better bring this to a conclusion? Well, how about we review that map and for the next meeting, um, I mean, I, actually, Jason, I mean, I've seen the map, so I'm totally fine with those proposed locations. Um, but maybe we, everybody else who used those, yes, says those, are these, these seem reasonable, these general areas seem reasonable. I don't know what else the town needs from you. I mean, some of the circles were kind of big, right? I mean, yeah, I had right, just said, it, yeah. Yeah, I know. So is it in the big rotary by the Senis? Is it in the little rotary next to the yeah. cafe? Is it over as you cross the river? I mean, yeah. that's the kind of stuff that we should talk about and then decide on and say, okay, this is what we want to do. And some of those may be more viable than others because some might be private property versus blo and blocking, you're talking about blocking traffic, uh, all that side, side, line of sight, that kind of stuff. And I think that's where the game comes in is if we pick a general area, um one corner might be okay the other side of the road might be a no and um right. it it there's a lot more involved in it than you know us saying this is what a sign costs and this is what names would be put on it and right um you know when we look at the codes and everything else you know paul thanks for sharing that too So I can, I'll update the map and give more zeroed in locations. Um, maybe I'll do three separate pages where it's zoomed in and three options for each sign that we can talk about. Right, okay. So, so let me um, suggest this, hold on a second. Let me share this. Can we do a little, um, have a bit of a discussion right now. Hey, Peter, I, 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 I'm starting to run into a time issue. So um, we right. can, but, but, but we've already done this. Jason, Jason had a map. Okay. We've, we've, we've done, we've, we've gone through this and we have three general areas. Okay. Do you recall that? I mean, one was at the 62 495 intersection, one was in around River Bridge, and the other one was on 62 as you come into Clinton at the five way or whatever way intersection. I don't recall the exact locations, but I do recall that we are a year hence and not anywhere. So that's why I thought. Well, no, I think we're somewhere. I mean, I think we've got prices and we've got designs and things like that. And so now, you know, that sounds like Jason's asked around and he knows that we need to get more specific about what specific locations we're talking about and whether people will let us put those signs there or not. So uh, I yeah. think the other thing we decided was that asking for funding for signs during COVID was not going to happen. That's also that's true. Good. That's a good point. Well, and that's why we were talking the, the sponsorship side of it. So I think once we dial in the location and we get Uh, temporary approval or we get the okay to say yes that could be done there then it's how do you dial in on the funding you know um, and do we get sponsorship or do we just propose it to the town and say look you know this will be good for the community and this is why x y and z and um, see where it goes so given that what's the what's the next step between now and the next meeting so i will get specific locations for each sign um you know if it's an intersection i'll i'll zoom in and give three potential locations we'll we'll confirm which locations we all want or we think would be best 
and then I'll reach back out and see what is feasible as far as um, the code and property rights and all that jazz. So Jason, I, I'm happy to help you, Jason. That's fine. Okay. So when do you think the two of you might be able to sh share that with the group between now and the next meeting? Well, let's figure out when the next meeting is, and then we'll figure out when we can share that. Um, I'm, I'm, what I'm hinting at is maybe a week or two. Is that an option? Yeah, I, I can get yep. Paul. I can get you the map, and we can kind of dial in on some things. Yep, that's because you, you, it was fresh on your mind there. <laughs> yep. So the end of the following week, perhaps. Let's. Sure. So that's November twentieth. Uh, by the end of November twentieth. By November twentieth. Yeah, sure. Paul, Paul yeah, I'll get you something probably before Veterans Day. Okay. My, so my you two, you want, Jason, you'll share something with the group by then, by email? Great. Yeah. I'll get with Paul and we'll dial it in and then by weekend in the 21st or whatever that is, we'll have something to the group. Great. And then um, the IT stuff, you'll, could you, do you have time this week to do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to James. Okay. All right. I, I, I have one quick thing, which is um, Council on Aging is what COA stands for. They have a work off program. We could apply for and get some free, I'm not sure what help, I'm not sure what we need help with, if anything, but that's what that entry is about. Okay. Anything, Jeff, Jason, Paul, come to mind where we could use some? Um, the only help. thing I could think of is I know Marty Miller does photography for for that sometimes if you wanted pictures for the website or something like that. He's got a, quite a lot of pictures already. That's an idea. Any... All right, well, think about it. If there's anything you can think of we can talk about it offline or next meeting how long would you like to um wait for the next meeting we have thanksgiving and christmas you want to do something between thanksgiving and christmas or another time well it's either that or the beginning of the next year right right jason jeff I'm just pulling up my calendar here so I can kind of feel this out. Cause... Jeff, will you start get it's not Jeff. I mean, actually, Jeff's also. But Jason, I suspect you might start getting crazy or not, really, but, uh, with Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's already started getting crazy with the case counts going up. Yeah. What does case counts mean? For COVID. COVID, yeah. Oh, uh -huh. Are you guys restricting access again or not yet? Um, we, we haven't had to restrict access yet. We, we have some technology that's helping us with customer counts. So, okay. we can have so, so we can have live data at how many people are coming in and out of the doors. Okay. Uh, but as we move into like that pre-Thanksgiving week and oh, yeah. you know, there, there's going to definitely, you're probably going to see lines um, to, to control the amount of people inside the buildings. That would be a lot of fun in November and December. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I try not to go there on the weekend to begin with, so. <laughs> I, that is, I, I advise to avoid Wegmans on the weekends. <laughs> yep. um, if you guys wanted to try to connect in December, it would have to be weekend in the 12th. It's okay with me. Um, if not, we go to the new year. Weekending the twelfth. Okay. Um, so the seventh through the, the seventh through the eleventh or the tenth? Is that what you're suggesting, Jason? Yeah. Seventh, uh, eighth, or tenth would work best for me. All of those are good with me. Jeff, Paul. Uh, I think that should be fine for me. Eighth or tenth should be okay as well. I just wanted to take a quick look here. I think the 
eighth would be better just in case we go back to yeah. our normal hours, but yeah. The eighth would be better too. Yeah. Eighth works for me. And what's the alternative to the eighth? The eighth is not ideal. The tenth? That's Hanukkah. Is it? Yeah. Jeff? Is the tenth? Assuming that we are keep with our shortened hours, the tenth should be fine. I just don't know if that would be. Why don't we do this? Why don't we say the eighth or the tenth, and and we'll pick it. Just pencil in both dates, and and uh, and make we'll make the eighth the uh, preferred choice. How's that? Works for me. Sure. All right. So the eighth or the tenth. Matt, Mark. Chris, anything further you want to add or ask? I'm good. Thank you for the opportunity to kind of tell you guys what we're doing up, up here. Uh, and I do appreciate all the efforts uh, your committee does in promoting businesses. And obviously, Riverbridge is a big part of that. But thank you all. You're very welcome. Thanks for the invite, guys. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks, Mark. Jason, Thanks, Paul, everyone. Jeff, anything further? Yep. All set. Good. Motion to adjourn. Any seconds? I second. Uh, all in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. And aye.